Greetings campers, today is Friday, September 3rd, 2021. Do you know what that means? It means it is the opening day for Halloween Horror Nights 30, HHN 30, 30 years in the making. And last year we didn't even get to have HHN, so this is the first time for HHN to happen since 2019. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to be back. It's opening night, there's a buzz in the air. Um, just walking around the corner a while ago when I first saw that sign, I almost got teary eyed because I'm so happy to be back. And I'm not alone. Tonight is opening night. The event is completely sold out. We're all very excited. Halloween is alive. Join me. bus from the hotel and I can already see the arch right in front of me with the HHN decor, the HHN logo medallion hanging in the center with Jack on it and it's just good to be back. The tagline for the event this year is never go alone. It's only the first day and I'm already breaking the rules because I am flying solo this evening. Um, we will be back later in the season with some friends and we'll do some more coverage. But tonight I decided I wanted to take a, uh, a quickie one night trip down here. And so I'm gonna experience it all on opening night. And uh, when we come back in about a month, I can compare notes and see what adjustments have been made, what changes have been made, because anytime you operate a haunted house or any kind of massive live event, especially of this scale, you can go in with the best laid plans and yet you're still going to have to iron out the kinks. You know, once you launch it, you're going to find problems and things that, that work great, better than you expected. You're going to find things that maybe didn't work so great. And so you're going to have to tweak it and fine tune it and make it awesome. I'm sure since employee preview the other night, they've already made some adjustments. So uh, I'm expecting nothing but the best. Universal always delivers a great show. Halloween Horror Nights is hands down the best Halloween event I've ever been to. It's the best Halloween event on the planet. And there are, like I said before, thousands and thousands of other fans who agree with me. What am I looking forward to most? Um, honestly, I'm so happy to be back. I haven't even really thought about the specifics of it. Beetlejuice. I think Beetlejuice is going to be great. Um, it's probably, you know, it's one of the only IP houses this year. They have Beetlejuice, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Haunting of Hill House, and Crypt TV Scare Zone. Uh, from all the pictures and videos I've seen online, that looks to be promising, uh, as well as the Terror Queen Scare Zone. Uh, that area of the park usually, in my opinion, has one of the best scare zones, just because the trees lend themselves so well to the atmosphere, and uh, you don't get that in all the other scare zones. But but I mean, yeah, just the event as a whole. In all honesty, I'm just so happy to be here. Um, I am armed with Express Pass, so I fully expect to get through everything tonight, at least all the Halloween stuff. And if there's some time left over, we'll hop on some rides, but the priority is definitely the Halloween stuff. We are just inside the archway outside the front gate. There's already people gathered to go in. It's a little after four o'clock and the crowds are already building here at the front gate. As much as I would love to be in the front row for tonight's opening ceremony, uh, I gotta eat because I've been up since stupid early and I've been on a plane. And so we're gonna head over to City Walk and grab a bite to eat, but we will be back here when the park opens for the evening. <laughs> it 
it's raining and I don't even care. I'm here, I'm at Horror Nights, I'm at HHN 30. Horror Nights open for the first time in two years. Rain's not slowing us down, here we go. There were actors out here just a second ago. It's starting to rain harder. I think they just pulled them because of the rain. We'll probably get some more actors here in a little bit. All right, the event just opened. And right as it did, it started pouring rain. So uh, we're in the lights, camera, action, scare zone right behind me. They've pulled the performers, it looks like, until the rain passes by. But it does look like the haunts are open. So I'm going to try to hit Legendary Truth. Uh, Case Files Unearthed haunt is right over here. So I'm going to put the camera away, try to keep it dry until later, and uh, knock out a couple of haunts. wasn't walking by maybe they got Jack just working the queue line which is awesome I've never seen him have actors just entertain the people in line back here before so that's pretty cool all right Woo! it has been a uh, a crazy start to Horror Nights so far I got my first beer I have the whole hog pumpkin ale it tastes like liquid pumpkin if you're a beer aficionado or just a pumpkin aficionado I would recommend it but man what a night. Pretty much about 5 o'clock or 5.30, it started pouring rain, and it just now kind of moved past. Uh, it's been raining off and on, so um, I have already done over half of the haunts. Okay, haunts that I've done so far. Um, I started with Unearthed, uh, and that was... I didn't really know what to expect in that one. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with the lore, I guess, of a lot of the original stuff. It was a decent show, but not my favorite. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is probably the one I was most looking forward to, and it was lots of fun. It wasn't the scariest. Uh, it's kind of the gag house, I think, this year. Beetlejuice isn't necessarily that scary. It is the world of Tim Burton the entire way through, and the way they did some of the gags was really cool. The way uh, Beetlejuice appears as the snake, it was also it was really well done. It was also a really good scare. Uh, I'm going to keep these reviews spoiler-free for now, 
because it's the first night of the event. We will be back later in the season and perhaps we'll give you guys full-fledged, spoiler-heavy reviews of every show, but I really like Beetlejuice. It was, uh, it was very fun housey, but lots of cool special effects. Hill House. The Haunting of Hill House, I will admit, um, I watched the show. I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, I wasn't a huge, huge fan. So going into the event, going into the haunt, uh, it wasn't one I was anticipating. Not as much as something like Beetlejuice, but uh, I still liked the show and the haunt blew me away. Universal did a behind the scenes feature on their blog already showing some of the pictures and talking about the making of it and the facade none of the pictures do it justice the facade of that house when you walk in is incredible but what really blew me away about hill house was the way they utilized so many special effects that one actually got me to jump a couple of times the tall man right near the beginning uh he hit me and it was just a good old actor scare he got me right off the bat then there were just so many other cool special effects the bent neck girl there was a pregnant lady really unique special effect um but Hill House definitely for the effects and for the scares, number one so far of the night. Scary Ohio was another good one. Uh, like Unearthed, I am not familiar enough with all the lore, but I did see some references in there to HHN's past, which I have attended and seen. So I wasn't completely foreign to it. But overall, it's just a great kind of classic haunt. There's a lot of different uh, tropes and, and themes that kind of run together in there under the blanket of Scary Ohio. And uh, that one was fun, but not my favorite. Puppet Theater Captive Audience. This is another one where it's super, super, super unique. Um, there was some beautiful set design in there, beautiful set work. I liked a lot of the effects in there, um, but it was not my favorite. I, I feel like it was a little overhyped by a friend of mine, uh, but it wasn't bad either. Wicked Growth. The Pumpkin Lord in Wicked Growth. Oh my gosh, like you've seen the pictures of the facade out front, just the, the pumpkin tunnel and that is amazing like take that and amplify it to a hundred and that's the whole show all the way through it's just like classic halloween pumpkins 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 uh there was a really cool scene with a witch but the whole thing just oozed classic halloween and behind hill house that's my number two so far uh, i definitely liked wicked growth All right, so that's my update for now. Um, I'm gonna finish this beer. We're gonna go see HHN Nightmare Fuel, and uh, hopefully some scare zones are going, and we'll go see some scare zones. Holy crap, let's talk about Nightmare Fuel. That was insane. I feel like if Rammstein collaborated with Cirque du Soleil that might be something what the child would look like uh, between those two entities. Everything was loud and aggressive and fast and lots of uh, it, it's skin, it's BDSM, it's leather and it's sexy dancing and all of that stuff is in there but it's also wrapped up in some uh, really cool magical illusions as well as uh, aerial acrobatic circus acts like all of that is within but it's presented in a very BDSM package. If if you took Academy of Villains, shoved a ball gag in its mouth, and put a dog leash on it and lit it on fire, that is nightmare fuel. It's so fast from start to finish, in your face. Did I mention fire? We all know I love fire. So much fire. All right, I'm gonna also say this about uh, Nightmare Fuel. Production value is everything, and I think it's underrated. A lot of people don't realize it, uh, but the quality of the lighting rig, the sound system, the scenic, uh, very industrial scenery, uh, lighting design and lighting rig like you would see at any major touring concert, and same with the sound system, and that makes all the difference. I have seen other theme park shows, I have worked other theme park shows that don't come near to that. I don't just grade it on the performers alone. I look at every aspect of it in the production. Music, the music selections were great. Uh, all the gear, all the, the scenery, just all of it from start to finish, it's just a, an overload of entertainment. And uh, you don't get something like that a lot of places, not in a theme park show anyway. Uh, for this to just be something that you can see free with park admission multiple times a night if you wanted to, uh, I think it's great. Now, Having given that raving five-star review to this show, I miss Bill and Ted. Bring back Bill and Ted. 
We're coming up on the Crypt TV scare zone. Let's see if we've got actors out over here. I see lights going. I see fog going. That was the other thing earlier when it was raining. They didn't have fog going either. It was, it was just dull and raining. I see actors out. I see actors out. Crypt TV scare zone. clips from the show. I watched a little bit of Crypt TV when I found out it was a scare zone and uh, I watched this episode with the door and it was pretty crazy. see a speaker and a pedal down here. I think there's supposed to be a scare actor here, but there's not. I totally did that with my foot. There's no actor there, but I, I stepped on the pedal. scare zone I officially got to see I've already walked through three of the others but it was pouring rain and they didn't have the cast out so uh, that's very cool tonight sold out opening night sold out and it is packed the streets are packed everything's crazy um, it was raining earlier but the rain has passed and now it feels like HHN it's busy there's screaming there's loud noise right over here behind me the uh, lagoon show is going off it's amazing. Now it feels like Halloween. Now it feels like September. Coming up on another scare zone in New York City. The aliens have landed and they want us to submit.
Looks like there's some crazy experiments going on on people who've been abducted. right there he totally got me to the icons house this is one I look forward to quite a bit thank you she was warning me where the puddles were so I didn't get wet little does she know that I am saturated from earlier goes rip ride rocket never been to HHN before one thing you just got to get used to is walking lots and lots of walking lots and lots of lines even if you have Express Pass like I do um, you still walk miles and miles and miles so uh, that's just part of it everything here is made to be high volume it's high capacity they get people through it and uh, the queue lines are no different so you wind up in situations like this and that's just a part of coming to the show so um, if you expect it I guess it's not as much as a shock the first time I came to Horror Nights I did not expect the crowd and I did not expect the uh, the conga line into the haunts they conga line you right into the door there is no groups so uh, just be aware of it but having said that I do believe the houses are really well done the houses are all designed with that kind of throughput in mind and uh, 
most of them, you know, hit the mark. They do really well. There are good startles, there's good scares, there's really innovative special effects. You're gonna see special effects in these houses that you have not seen in any other haunted house. They've done really well as far as mastering the scare and the startle when you're dealing with this volume of people. And I, that's one thing that drew me to Universal and to HHN from the first time I came here, which was for HHN. The first time I ever got to come to Universal Studios was during HHN. Everybody is applauding the uh, cast change. They change over cast, I think, every 45 minutes because working in these haunts, is, it's cardio, man. It's activity. These guys are going nonstop. The crowd's coming through nonstop. And uh, every once in a while, you'll see them in black robes, completely concealed. They'll come out single file, and then a new set will go back in. Uh, it's hard work being a scare actor at an event like this. So I love that when they were coming out through all these different lines, these are lines for three different haunted houses all in one uh, breezeway between sound stages, and they just got this huge round of applause, and I think that is incredible. That's awesome. You don't see that anywhere else. All right, let's talk about the Icons house. I just came out. Um, I don't know that it was my favorite overall, but there were some of my favorite things in there. First of all, it's all icons. There is no filler. It's icon after icon after icon after icon. And uh, without getting too spoiler-like, the finale scene, um, the finale scene is set up really well. It looks great and any icon could be there at any point. Uh, they're all there to some degree, but only one is the center of attention. And Lady Luck was the center of attention when I went through. Um, but yeah, the, that was a great house. The facade, when you walked in, um, the Hill House facade was good. I like the icon facade better. I like the effects that are in it. I like the way where it kind of felt like you were walking into the mouth of hell and or a music video starring all of the icons and it was just great it was really well done overall start to finish that was a solid house all right i just came out of the texas chainsaw massacre house and uh it was kind of middle of the road uh there was a lot of good scares in there i feel like uh the actor sound effect pedals and buttons when they pop out uh, for the chainsaws, I feel like it was louder than it typically is, you know, like a chainsaw would be if it was a, an actual chainsaw running. I like that. Uh, the two things, honestly, that I didn't like about that house was some of the Leatherface actors seemed to hang out too long. You know, you get in, get the scare, and then retreat, and some of them kind of hung out, and that kind of killed it. The other thing was that... Uh, most of these houses, you know, they're either in a tent or in this case on a sound stage. And Universal does a really good job with false ceilings. They put in a lot of texture and they put on a lot of false ceiling stuff. And so you really kind of feel immersed in it. There was a lot of just open top hallways and rooms in this where you can look up and, you know, it's obvious that you're on a sound stage and not, you know, in the scene that they want to convince you you're in. It just seemed a little light on the ceilings if that makes any sense but overall not a bad house uh they had elements from uh, multiple chainsaw movies uh chop chop makes an appearance so that's pretty cool but uh yeah solid house all right now we're heading into the 30 years 30 fears icon scare zone right at the front of the park the rain has stopped the characters are out, the fire's going, the fog is going. Halloween is here, baby. It is officially the month of September.
that I got to do that house last year during the daytime when they when they opened them during the day and it was that and Tooth Fairy and that was my favorite of the two even tonight having seen everything else it's up against still one of my favorites uh, I, there's so many just great classic elements in there at its core what I really love is the story it's a love story Frankenstein's monster has been killed and the Bride of Frankenstein is going insane, doing everything in her power to bring him back. It's so romantical, isn't it? But truly, I, I love the effects in there. I love the Easter eggs in there. Um, and just overall, really, really great show. Warms my little Halloween heart. Definitely in the top three. All right, I'm starting my second lap around the park now. We're going into the lights, camera, action, scare zone. Earlier, right when I got here, it was pouring rain. So no scare actors were out, nothing was going on. But already I can hear the screams of a uh, of scare zone. So many monsters of every genre running around lights, camera, action. It is like a, a monster movie set with all the monsters turned loose. Chainsaws. I'm all about it.
the lights, camera, action, scare zone is a lot of fun. Uh, I think this might be my favorite one so far. So far. Got one more. Still got to see the uh, Terra Queen stare, scare zone, but I think lights, cameras, action is it for now. It had everything. It had all the classic sci-fi movie stuff. It had callbacks to HHNs gone by and all the chainsaws. At least right now, tonight, all the chainsaws are in lights, camera, action. Lots of fun. <laughs> The viney glowing trees are a cool effect over here. Love the glowing trees, that's awesome. Smells so good. Like I said, I love this effect on the trees. These glowing vines and how they interact with all the other lighting in this scare zone. Uh, that's something different. Uh, usually over in this scare zone, there's usually a lot of lights hanging from these trees, like uh, jack-o'-lanterns or uh, hanging jars, kind of fairy type lights. And they didn't do any of that this year. And as cool as that is, I gotta say, the the living, breathing trees add a whole new element. I think they found a good way to kind of reimagine this space without doing the same thing over and over again. I love it. I love it. mayhem this year was awesome there were so many uh callbacks and it was icon heavy and it talked about uh all the uh, L, uh all the ips this year as well as uh hhns of the past and i love it i'm a sucker for effect shows some people are down on it because it's not uh fancy enough i guess i don't know but the projections and the the lasers and the water and just everything. The Bellagio fountains I like as much as the next guy, but the Bellagio fountains don't have anything 
on Marathon of Mayhem. All right, it's about 12.30. Uh, it looks like just by foot traffic in the streets, it's kind of starting to thin out a little bit. Not too much, but a little. I've done all the haunts. I've seen all the scare zones. Uh, I'm gonna try to hit a couple of rides, I think, before I get out of here. And then I think I'll top off the night with a visit to the Tribute Store because I haven't seen it in person yet. I've already watched a bunch of videos and stuff, so I kind of know what to expect. I'm still excited about it. I love it. Um, but also, I'm going to do that last because I know I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. And I don't want to carry it. So I'm going to buy all that stuff on the way out. So let's see what rides are open. Let's go do some rides. I did not score well on Men in Black, but shooting aliens, that's a fun time, that's a fun ride. Uh, fits right in with Halloween Horror Nights. Last stop of the night, Tribute Store, gonna grab so much merchandise. The Victorian Manor facade continues inside. There's so much detail in here. I'm going to kind of blow through here this trip, but when I come back, I will probably do a more detailed video of the Tribute Store. Music of Halloween Horror Nights album available September 14th. I did all the haunted houses and uh, I liked them all. They were all pretty good. I think overall my top three favorite haunts in no particular order were Wicked Growth, Haunting of Hill House, and The Bride of Frankenstein with Beetlejuice really close up there for the top three spot, but it was a great show. The precautions, the, the plexiglass, the vinyl dividers, things like that that they're doing inside the haunts. Um, overall, I don't think it's that big a deal. It doesn't diminish the event. It doesn't diminish the quality. There were a few spots, just a few, in a couple houses where there was not plexi. There were spots where actors popped out or that the illusion that the actor was in uh, wouldn't function with, with a divider there. Uh, I still think it was safe socially distanced or appropriately distanced. All the actors had some kind of face covering. Some were very obvious, some blended with the costume as, as part of the costume and so you didn't really notice. But regarding the, the plexi, I don't think it really takes away. Um, the actors, 90% of the actor positions, they're doing the exact same acts that they would be doing otherwise. The, the performance is exactly the same and the fact that there's clear vinyl there 
doesn't really change anything. There are a few spots, and I mean a very few, where if you have caught on to the style and the way the houses work here, where the, the vinyl or the plexi kind of gives away that there's an actor there, because you may see a spot where there's, there's just clear plastic hanging so you know that someone's supposed to pop out. But those are few and far between. I'd say maybe 5%. Uh, and again, if you're really paying attention, uh, if you're just walking through, just taking in the sights and enjoying yourself, you're probably not even going to notice. But overall, I think they handled it very well. I think it was a very, very good event. I liked all the houses. Oh my gosh, what an insane night it has been. Halloween Horror Nights 30 is open. We did opening night. I saw all the haunts, I saw all the scare zones, I saw both of the shows, I got to ride rides. I made out like a bandit in the tribute store, probably spent more than I should have, but uh, wow, what a night. Um, I'm about to head back to my hotel and crash, my feet are killing me, I am drenched head to toe, either in sweat or rain from earlier. Uh, it rained really hard at the beginning of the night, and uh, the first hour, first couple of hours, it was, it was kind of miserable, and I didn't know how it was going to go. But as soon as the rain pulled through, it's exactly like every other night, every other year. It, it felt like horror nights again, and it was so good to be back. Uh, the last year and a half has been hard on all of us. Um, a lot of people have missed this event. A lot of people have just missed going out and doing stuff like theme parks, period. So I'm just thankful to be here. I have no complaints. I got my money's worth. I had a great time. I think it's a good event. I think it's worth visiting. I am going to be back. So if you have anything specifically here at Halloween Horror Nights you'd like me to delve into a little deeper next time, leave it in the comments below and we will try to take a closer look at some other stuff because we will be back in a few weeks. Again, I'm just thankful to be here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Um, thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, following along. Uh, my YouTube channel is in its infancy and it is my goal to be able to bring you guys more videos like this on a more regular basis. So for those of you who are watching, who have supported, who have subscribed, thank you. If you haven't and you did enjoy this, please do consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. Now go do stuff! Thank <laughs> you.